mast actually stands for ferrari but you might be confused right because mast actually would stand for maximum allowable stem torque right so what is this ferrari coming in between let's look at this amazing example so let's imagine that we have a Ferrari and Ferrari can run at very high speed. So let's imagine that it can run at 200 miles per hour. Now as an experiment, we take the engine out from the Ferrari and we put it in an old used up taxi. Can you tell me one thing? Will the taxi work at the same speed of 200 miles per hour? What is your logic saying? Will it really be able to sustain this? So the answer to it is something very different. The answer is that the engine can give the torque of 200 miles per hour because it is still the engine of Ferrari. But the mechanical parts of the car will not be able to sustain because they are too old, right? But you would think what does this have to do with the valve? Let's look at that. So for example, the engine can be very clearly compared to the actuator and the car can be compared to that of the valve, especially the mechanical parts of the car. Now, imagine that we take this assembly of actuator and valve and we put it all together and the actuator can have a torque of 500 Newton per meter cube. However, the mast is 400 Newton per meter cube. That is the maximum allowable stem torque is just 400, but we can give 500. Is this combination good? The answer is no, it will destroy your valve. So we learn a very beautiful equation that we should always remember for a good engineering practice, which is that your mast always has to be greater than the maximum actuator torque. This is to be noted in bold letters for every engineer. If you want to engineer a plant in a safe fashion. So full bore valve basically has this length, which is the length of the valve ID. That is the basically the fluid that can pass through the valve. This distance and the line distance, which is the line ID. That is the inner diameter of the pipe is same. So basically the flow has no restriction passing through a full bore valve. Now you might be able to guess what will be your reduced bore valve. The reduced pore valve is similar to it, except that if you see this distance, which is the distance which is inside of the valve where the fluid would be passing, would be different than compared to what is the size of the line. So since it is reduced than the line size, the term comes as reduced pore valve. Now let's get to the next important question as to when to use a reduced bore valve and when to use a full bore valve. So let's look at those considerations. The first consideration is pegging. This is an interesting consideration. Imagine that this is your pipe and here's your pig. So basically pigging is a process where you try to cleanse the pipe by inserting the pig into the pipe. So basically the pig passes through the pipe and any impurities or whatever dirt is considered or collected inside the pipe is removed off. So this is, this is basically a type of cleaning which is done to the pipes to uh, enlarge their life cycle. Now what happens is how does this have a consideration with our full bore or reduced bore? Let's look into that. So imagine this is your reduced bore valve and we insert the pig. What is going to happen? Your pig is going to get stuck inside this valve because the pig size would be that of the line ID but the reduced bore would have a lesser size. So the pig won't be able to pass through the valve and it would get stuck. Whereas if you take a full bore valve which is the winner here because the entire pig would be able to pass through the valve. So for such cases we need to consider full bore valves and we cannot consider reduced bore valves. The next criteria is one of the most important criteria. It's simple but one of the key criteria in not just engineering projects but throughout the industry which is cost. So in terms of cost, the special reason for going with reduced bore, one of the primary concerns is the cost. So here, if you notice, the cost of full bore is greater as compared to reduced bore. Why? Because the material that is going to be used for full bore is going to be more as compared to reduced bore since the bore has to be exactly equal to the line. Hence, if it's a cost consideration, reduced bore has an upper hand and it stands as the winner. Now let's look into the next case, which is the process fluid. So especially as a rule of thumb or generally, if it's a utility line and you have water, it is recommended you might go for a reduced pore valve for such cases. It depends on client to client design basis, but usually for such cases, you can go for a reduced pore valve and save the cost of the project. Whereas for process fluids, usually it depends on how critical the process fluid is. Example, certain acids or viscous fluids or such cases where you might have to go for full bore valves. Now, the next consideration is pressure drop. 
Yes. If you see in full bore and compared to reduced bore, what do you think which valve would have higher pressure drop? It's very simple that the reduced bore valve would have a higher pressure drop as compared to full bore. Why? Because the blind size is reduced. So there is going to be some restriction to the fluid and some pressure drop. This pressure drop is not high, but still you need to confirm with the process if they're okay with such pressure drops throughout the line or throughout the system or have they compensated for such pressure drops. The next thing which comes to mind is how do we decide as instrumentation engineers how to go is there some kind of thumb rule that we can follow that helps us to identify which type of valve should be selected for this case what i feel is one of the good criteria is to look for what the piping department is doing why because in the same lines where instrumentation valves would be used also manual walls would be used which would be procured by piping so even piping would do their analysis and research to which type of valve would be suitable because piping valves are having a great quantity as compared to our instrumentation valves. So for such cases, they already would have done a survey as to finding out which valve would be suitable. So for such cases, for our automatic valves, we can look at that line or that piping spec and see that what they are doing. And we can sometimes just follow them as a thumb rule. So this is also another thumb rule that we can use to follow while selecting full bore or reduced bore valves. Let's try to understand NONC valves. So for example, here are four valve configuration put together. If you see from the symbol, we can understand that these are hand wheel operated valves. Now, usually in PNID, if the valves are not colored, it means that they are normally open and the ones which are colored means normally closed. So sometimes in PNID, nothing is mentioned with respect to valves. Just by the color, we have to identify that these are normally open and these are normally closed valves. Next thing is in normal operation, this control valve valve will be allowing the flow to pass through it which you can see from the blue line which seems normal now when we want to remove this control valve for some issues it has happened or maybe just for normal regular maintenance then we will have to close these two valves once we close these two valves and there is fluid which is stuck in between right so in order to isolate the control valve then we will have to drain it off so these normally closed valves then will be opened and that would drain all the liquid out and then we can safely remove the control valve out from the service so usually this NONC configuration is used for isolations etc and sometimes neither the valves are colored nor entire statement is mentioned in those cases you might find near the valve these words like like NO and NC mentioned. So NO stands for normally open and NC stands for normally closed valve. Finally, if you're interested to learn control valves in depth, then there is a free ebook available which covers amazing parameters like material selection, valve sizing, valve design, and valve standards. The link is given in the description below. Please subscribe if you have liked the video.